Hmm. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Let your glory be above all the earth. Amen, amen. Blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, in honor, power and mind belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. Unto the Lord. Be the glory, great things he has done. Unto the Lord be the glory, great things he has done. Be the glory, great things he has done. Unto the Lord. Be the glory, great is he has done. Hallelujah. Livra bara baba ya brande seke jehuza. God, you are so good. God, you are so good. God, you are so good. You are so good to me. This morning, you are going to begin to talk to the Lord today that every plan of the wicked for this month of November, every satanic agenda for this month of, month of November, today we cancel by the blood of Jesus. We cancel, we abolish, we destroy every workings of the devil. Go ahead and begin to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. We are thanking. Amen. Let's begin to ask God that today, even as you go to our churches, that today, that the hand of the Lord will be upon our lives, the hand of the Lord will be upon every church, every church that, um, hallelujah, that the Spirit of God will break forth in the service. Hallelujah. Let's begin to, let's go ahead and begin to pray. Lord, manifest your power, Lord, manifest your glory in every service today. In the name of Jesus. Oh, 
In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Say my father, my father. As I begin to pray this morning, open my eyes by your blood that I may see. Let's go ahead and begin to pray. By your blood, open my spiritual eyes. Oh God, open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes. My spiritual eyes must open by the blood. Oh God, open my eyes, oh God. Let my eyes be open. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you say with aggression? Say in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. You're going to pray this morning and you're going to talk to the Lord today and you're going to declare in the name of Jesus Christ that this new week will be a week of blessings. This week will be a, a week of honor to your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For every new thing, there is a new devil. So you're going to pray today that every attempt of the devil, every curse, every spell, every enchantment, every sorcery, every witchcraft, every divination, every divination, witchcraft, sorcery, every attack of the devil, every antagonism, every every evil conspiracy released against your life, released against this week, Lord, in, released against this month of November, as you enter the month of November, every satanic conspiracy prepared against you, every conflict, every warfare, every witchcraft, every attack, Every sorcery, every that they shall backfire, they shall backfire by fire. Open your mouth and begin to fire prayer. Let the powers of witchcraft Libran do Declare the blood. Lord, I declare the blood of this week. A week of blessings. A week of favor. Let the strength of God Regadere <laughs> 
Oh Spirit of God, let your spirit fall upon me, let your glory fall upon me. Hallelujah. Rebebe rebebe ya banandori bebia shade bandele be mentele ya bandele bebia rogodo robo 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 komondori bebia baradi ela bandele be rebebe rebebe ke berebe bia banandori ya raba baraba baka bandori bebia banandori ya rebebe rebebe ke berebe bia banandori bebia baradi ya o raba rebebe ke berebe bia banandori bebio rogodo rebebe 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 baradi alleluia zade banda raba baya in jesus name we pray Amen. Hallelujah. What a God we serve. Amen. He's a wonderful God. He's a glorious God. Hallelujah. I want some people to be a woman of prayer, man of prayer. Hallelujah. If we begin to teach, you see a lot of people. People just love teaching, 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 teaching. No, you, this morning you wake up and man, hallelujah, and it's time to pray. Get yourself ready to pray. Be in a, 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 Affiliate yourself to pray. Amen. Somebody say prayer. People... <laughs> My goodness, look at your voice. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. People just love, just want to just listen and listen and listen. Amen. Hallelujah. And just, you know, participate in prayer. Open your mouth this morning and pray. Hallelujah. Start teaching and you, some of you might want to go and sleep. Some of you want just want to listen and listen. And no, 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 no. In this country, there's so much teaching. Amen. Open your mouth and pray. And that is the whole thing. Command your wake. Somebody say, command your wake. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're going to talk to God today. Say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, every negative dream I have had this week, every negative dream from today, every negative dream last week, Lord, I cancel it from manifesting in my future. I cancel every past attacks from manifesting in my future. There shall be no crossover. Hallelujah. Verre bebe rebe be ya brandori be ya brandori be yo zaya. Zale bandele bebe rebe ya bradi. Thank you Lord Jesus. Zile bendele be ya. Raba ba raba ba raba ba gabandori be yo. Rebe be rebe be ke rebe be rebe be rebe be ya bradi. Ragade rebe be rebe be ke rebe be rebe. Oh raba ba raba ba raba ba raba ba rebe be ya. Oh rebe be rebe be ke rebe be ya bradi ya. Raba ba raba ba gabandori be ya bradi ya. Zile be le be be le be be rebe be rebe be rebe be rebe. Ah raba ba raba be ke be ya bradori be yo. Oh raba ba raba ba raba ba ke rebe be ya bradi. I break the powers of witchcraft. I break the Attack, Liban Telebia Barandia, Rogodoro Baba 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 Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Say every satanic decree made against my life and my family. Brick by fire. The Bible says, No weapon formed against thee shall prosper every tongue that shall rise against thee in the day of judgment. You say what? Thou shalt condemn. You are going to condemn every satanic spell, every enchantment that was released against you, sorcery projected against you for this week. Let it be revoked, let it be cancelled, let it be aborted. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Ragada rababa rebebe ya barandia. Zele bandele bebe rebebe ya barandia. Ragada rababa rababa gabanto rebebe ya barandia. Zele bandele bebe rebebe rebebe ya. Rebebe rebebe ke berebe ning. Rababa rababa bababo. Shande rebebe. Ele bandele bebe rebebe ya barandia. Ragada barakata bada dada de. Zele bandele bebe rebebe ya barandia. Oh rababa rebebe gabanto rebebe ya barandosh. Regede rebebe rebebe ya. Rebebe rebebe
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say this loud and clear. Say every satanic veil. Every satanic covering. Every satanic covering. Over my life and my family. Over my life and my family. Catch fire by the blood. Catch fire by fire. Open your mouth and fire prayer. Every veil of the wicked, every veil of the enemy, over my life, over my destiny. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, Philippians chapter 2. Let me just go ahead and minister quickly. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Zelebando Rabia Prododos. Philippians chapter 2. He says in verse 3. Let nothing be done to strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Let nothing be done to strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. It is always our choice, amen, every day, that when we come before His presence, amen, hallelujah, we must abase our haughtiness and pride and come before his throne. And usually, some, most of the times, when we come before his throne, whether we are prepared or anointed or not, we must always, this scripture that says we must always seek the best interest of others. We must always seek the best interest of others, see their anointing or see the progress of God in their lives. Hallelujah. What is that trying to say to us? And we, 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 we the sins of God. He says, look not. <clears throat> when you begin to esteem each everyone above you hallelujah what the bible is trying to say is that identify the strength of god in their lives and you can only you cannot just exalt them because it will exalt them it will just be foolishness hallelujah You've always you when you see people that comes around you always search for that which you don't have always search for the the the, the virtue that you know you don't have Amen. Emulate it. Emulate it. Celebrate it. Amen. Hallelujah. And add, that is one of the things. A great king is always surrounded by great men. Amen. Uh, by great men. And these great men have things that he doesn't have. Have wisdom that he doesn't have. And that is why when he sees um, a, a problem, everyone who are experts or who are very smart sees it in a different way. Hallelujah. And this is one of the things the scriptures the Lord is trying to say. Many of us, when we come around great people, we come around people who are not so great, we need to identify the greatness of God in their lives. Connect with it. Some of us just nonchalantly, we identify the strength of God in our lives, ignoring those who are around us that carry the same strength. Hallelujah. 
I pray for you today that by the power and the Holy Ghost, that your joy will be full in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray today that the Lord will open our eyes, open our understanding to grasp that which he wants to say to us. That the Spirit of God will begin to manifest in his fullness in the name of Jesus Christ. That the Lord, live baby, upon those who we break forth in your soul, break forth in your spirit, break forth in your life. Fresh fire will be upon your vessel in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit will speak, speak, speak intensively. And you'll begin to hear the voice of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Zare Prado Zabrandiriatai. Valava Dele Bebe Kabara Doribios. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let his mind be in you, which is Christ Jesus, which in being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself to be of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. Amen. Hallelujah. You could see how he obeys himself. Somebody who was a leader, a king, Amen. He's stripped of all that stuff. Amen. Many of us are trying to mount up, trying to put all kinds of, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, resumes on our forehead and um, saying that we are apostles and prophets and all that logos and everything. Amen. I just, some I just got tired of it. I said, you know what? Enough is enough. I think I just need to go by my name, you know, and um, it's not going to take anything from me. Hallelujah. And so we need to understand that in, in, in life, um, as long as you strip yourself from all, all these accolades, it's good to put it between because you need the respect or you need that or stuff. If the Lord asks you to do it, no big deal. Amen. But I just rather just go with my name. Hallelujah. I'll be hearing, you know, and brother be hearing, whatever it is. And, uh, and uh, if, if people want to identify with the gift, uh, they want to call me based on that gift. Um, you could see the, the, there's, the, there's a reality of that, and we will, very soon we're going to go into that scripture. I will show you that. I will show you. I will show you what it means. Hallelujah! I will show you. Amen. Hallelujah! Because usually, sometimes when a name, when you, when people call you by your name or call you by your gift, call you by the name God has given to you, usually that is the personality you manifest. Um, when we study the scriptures, something was very, very unique. Uh, the Bible says that uh, Jesus, um, um, God spoke to Abraham and, and Sarai. It says, from today, you shall no more be called Abraham. You should not be called Abraham. Abraham wondered, how can this be? No. That would be hard to answer the name because it, I don't have children. Abraham means father of all nations. How can I do that? If I answer my name, Father of all nations, a lot of people will be looking down at me. Some people will say I'm crazy. Some people will say I'm an idiot. Some people will say, I mean, and now you're calling me me to call Sarah, mother of women. I mean, I mean, mother. I mean, how, how do you say that? And so he was refusing that name, and God says, I'm changing your name because why? Abraham can be fruitless, but if I give you Abraham, I mean, you'll be you'll be fruitful. And as long as people begin to call you the father of nations, the promises of God will happen. Amen. Whatever you call yourself, amen, hallelujah. If you call yourself a failure, it will always happen in your life. But when your name is being changed for your future, that's why you have to address yourself as you where you are going, the direction at which you are going. Hallelujah. So Abraham, he received that name, he began to call himself Abraham. And soon afterward, Isaac came forth. <laughs> hallelujah. God has a reason of for changing Abraham's name. Your name has to suit the promises of God for your future. Your name has to suit that. And if you have a negative name that is fighting your future, you ought to change that name. Hallelujah. So, be, get ready. Let your name be fruitful. Let your name bear, bear fruit. Let your name give you the impact that your future needs. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And one of the things we have to do this morning is asking God that Lord release upon me the mind of Christ. You see, when the mind of Christ is upon your life, it causes you not to imagine or to flow in your own mind, in your soulish authority. When the mind of Christ is upon you, you begin to see and visualize. You begin to understand through the lens of the Father. You begin to see through the eyes of His love. You begin to reason through the eyes of Jesus. You know, when the Lord is about to release judgment, 
you flow in that. When the Lord, you see, one of the things I love about the Holy Ghost is this. People ask me, say, what are the gifts you have? What is the gift or the character you have? What is the giftings of the Spirit you have? Are you an apostle? Are you a prophet? Are you this? Are you that? Listen to me. All five offices has been on a believer who has sold himself to the Lord. All five offices. No, you can only operate in one office. Who told you that? Let me, let me give you an example. I've given you prophets, pastors, teachers, apostles for the word perfecting of the saints. Now, these are all offices. Offices doesn't mean that this is the only office you operate on the earth. Are you getting me? You can choose to operate in such offices when the Spirit of God takes you there. People think it's just a gift. And a gift. Let me put my prayer short. Because this, this takes me to another, another realms in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Let me put my prayer short. Sorry. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now I feel official. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sade bandara do robo go bondo ribia. Can I blow my shofar? I have to blow my shofar. Hallelujah. Blow my shofar so that to, to awaken everybody in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. God will bless you. We bless you. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we declare this new week is a week of jubilee. We declare that this week is a week of blessings. I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus. Hallelujah. That is a new sound. It's a new sound of Jubilee. Hallelujah. Your season has shifted. Hallelujah. May you receive the mind of Christ. I decree by the power of the blood of Jesus, everything that has been stagnant, receive divine movement. In the name of Jesus, everything that has died, according to the anointing that rose up Lazarus from the dead, let everything that has died be quickened and be resurrected back to life. I call it forth and I call it back to life in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, one of the things I want to explain to you is this. You've always seen how people say, oh, you know, the anointing of the Lord is upon me and this and this and that. Hallelujah. Surely, but you must understand. Amen. Hallelujah. You must understand that the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon you and the fire of the Holy Spirit must be upon your life. Amen, amen. And so you must understand that when you go through the nations and you travel around the world, never go with the consciousness of one office. Never go with the consciousness. God bless you, woman of God. Amen. Never go with this consciousness that, you know, I am, uh, I, I am just one operating under one office. Hallelujah. You might be called an apostle, a prophet, or whatever it is. Amen. Always understand that the Holy Spirit can shift you into different offices. Many times I go to a church, and the Bible says, if, um, I mean, he that receives a, um, a, a man of God in the name of a man of God receives a man of God's reward. He that receives a brother in the name of a brother receives a brother's reward. And he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet receives a prophet's reward. What is that trying to tell us? It tells us that 
whosoever office you choose to identify with, whichever spirit of God in the life of that individual you choose to identify, if you identify him as a prophet, if you identify him as an angel, if you identify him, he said that spirit, that grace, that office will manifest in your life. So what do I do? When people ask me, you say, what minister, what ministry do you have? I say, listen to me. When they were asking me in New York, what is your title? I said, listen to me. I'm not coming there. I'm coming. I'm not, if I come there as a prophet, I'm just coming there to give them a word. But I'm coming there to revive humanity. Hallelujah. And I understand that. Listen to me. When the Holy Spirit begins to manifest, see, the Holy Spirit took Philip, manifested Philip in front of the eunuch as an evangelist. Hallelujah. Now he will take Philip. And Philip began to preach in the church before it was taken to meet the Enoch. At that time, Philip was being man was manifesting as a as a as a, as a, as a, as a, as a pastor within the body of Christ. He was working as a pastor. There are other times the Lord will not take you to go and do an evangelistic work. Amen. At that time, you are operating as what as an evangelist. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the one that shifts you, that chooses to shift you into different offices. All five offices has been confided in us. Remember this, I've been raising up for the perfecting of the saints, the prophet, the apostles, the teachers, whatever it is. Are you hearing me? It is we individuals that choose to stay in one office. No, the Holy Ghost can choose to move you into different offices. The office means different administration of the Spirit. Are you hearing me? Different administrations of the Holy Spirit, different administrations. I can be here and the Holy Spirit says, go to Washington, D.C., go and start praying for the White House. That is an office of intercession. Okay, office of intercession and office of a, what, a prophet. And I could start, I could be doing my office there, be praying and interceding or whatever it is. The very soon the Lord says, Now, okay, now go. Go and start a church in this city. I can go over there to go and plant a church and I can start. I'm now a pastor. Prophetic pastor. Are you hearing me today? Go to Pakistan, go and preach the word. I'm now an evangelist. These are different offices. Hallelujah. Different, different offices. So that is why um, 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 we have to flow in the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. You have to flow. The every People say, oh, what is the gift you have? Are you, you have the gift of healing. You have the gift of this. You have the gift of that. Listen to me. All you have to do is to receive the Holy Ghost. Once the Holy Ghost is inside of you, He will manifest all nine gifts. Are you hearing me? Just be acquainted with the Holy Ghost. It's a carrier of all nine gifts. Once the Holy Ghost is, lives inside of you, that's it. Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost begins to move through you, He will begin to move through the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, word of understanding, through manifesting of different gifts. And you don't really need to say, oh, I have the gift of healing. No, no, no. no. And when the Holy Ghost shows up, everything in the room turns upside down. People will not even understand you because they'll be like, is this not the guy we know before? You're, you're, you, you become... <laughs> uh, you will speak with so much rudity, so much boldness, so much ruggedity. It's like everything about you changes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient to death, even to the death to the cross. Wherefore God also highly exalted him. You see this in verse 7. But, he, but, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of his servant, and was made in the likeness of of men and being found in the fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to death even this man listen to me recently i went to go uh, buy a whole sheep because i'm tired of eating goat goat is very tasty but i said you know what let me eat some clean animal so i went there and they were trying to get this whole big uh, sheep and, and get it and kill it and you could see goats goat resisting but this sheep they just called it and they were leading it and it was i was shocked there was no much fight no much struggle even though he knew he was going to go die i really felt pity i had pitied the, the, the sheep i just watched how they were taking the sheep to the slaughter and i was just like oh no oh no oh no to be confirmed to be a sheep is to be conform yourself to be very obedient amen uh goats symbolize the spirit of rebellion and stubbornness in goats and that is why sometimes you can their flesh are so sweet i tasted sheep not really tasty 
not really tasty. I don't know why, why I bought it. Hallelujah. But that is sheep character. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. The life of righteousness is the spirit that is, uh, is the spirit that we need. Look at what it says in verse 9. Wherefore God also who has his highly exalted him, giving him a name that is above every other name. Wow. He made himself of no reputation. He stripped himself from all honor. God did not do it. He chose to do it. He chose to humiliate himself. He chose to come without no reputation. Listen to me. Many of us put reputations in our lives. Like I told you before, um, earlier today, I said, you know what? We have the choice. We can choose to put reputation in our lives or we can choose not to. And when you choose to do that, you stick with that. When you choose to you choose your choose no reputation or you choose to work without no reputation guess what happens the lord himself will be the one to not crown you the lord himself will not give you a name that is above every other name the lord himself will not put a name that is honorable that is highly exalted by the lord amen so you must understand that um to humble ourselves it takes is our responsibility Hallelujah. It's our responsibility. It's our responsibility. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him. Amen. Verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things on the earth. And that every tongue should confess. What are we reading? Philippians chapter 2. That's what we're reading. Hallelujah. That every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my own presence only, but as much as in thy absence. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Look at what it says in verse 14. Do all things without murmuring. Do all things without murmuring, disputing. Hmm. Hallelujah. That ye may be blameless and harmless. The sons of God without rebuke in the midst of crooked and perverse nation. Hallelujah. In spite of the circumstances you are going through right now, in spite of where you find yourself in the midst of people, and one of the things is that um, when the Lord wants to exalt you, when the Lord wants to bring you forth, when the Lord wants to bring you to a place of glory, He puts you around the nasty people. He puts you around crazy people. He puts you about around criminals. He puts you around... Uh, and, and, and I spoke about this uh, while back again, but I think the Lord is wanting me to share that again. Hallelujah. Many of us who are really lo who really love the Lord, amen, uh, you will find if you really love the Lord and you want the Lord to exalt you, take it to another dimension in glory. The first thing you find yourself, you find yourself with people who are of a lower class like you. You find yourself like Joseph in prison among criminals, among people who are who who, who don't have the same moral value like yours. Amen. Hallelujah. You find yourself among devils. You find yourself among people pressing on every side. You find yourself like um, um, who else? Joseph was always finding himself with wrong company. I mean, people who were wanting to kill him, wanting to betray him. Same with David. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what happens. It's like, my goodness, can I, can I ever find a good friend? Yes, you will find them, but not yet. God is testing your character. He's, he's giving you the ability, amen, to walk with among wolves, and, amen, to design their character, to design their nature. So just enjoy the ride. Hallelujah. Because very soon, amen, when the Lord begins to exalt you, my goodness, they will be the one to come and beg and plead with you. Hallelujah. They can throw all kinds of stuff at you, spit on you, stab on you, and make you feel ugly and dirty and filthy. Just record it. The time is coming. You'll be exalted. I say you'll be exalted. Jesus of all Jesus, an innocent lamp, was placed among criminals. Can you imagine? A criminal on the left, criminal on the right. I mean, I mean, come on. Some of you, and some of you, um, you, you find yourself that you have friends who are into prostitution, friends who are into serious, diabolic stuff. You're like, what is going on? What is this crooked stuff going on? I mean, I mean the, way they are, the way they handle you, the way they treat you is just so ugly. And you're like, Lord, can I just get rid of these people? Can I just come out and just have my own company? Before an ego is exalted, the Lord will put him around chickens. Stupid chickens that will try to abuse him. And it's for you to know who you are in God. God sometimes will allow that. Amen. God will allow it. And that is why David was so tired. He had to isolate himself. Because they rejected him. They didn't accept him. They saw him for who he was not. They looked down upon him. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. But today in the name of Jesus Christ, may God give you the grace. That as you walk around among lions, the Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will empower you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
Every tongue. Mm -hmm. So when you are walking in the midst of them, I want you to, this is time to increase your praise, increase your thanksgiving. Well, understand that you, where you are, you know where the Lord is taking you to. Amen. Hallelujah. Just begin to thank the Lord. You see, people were grumbling, were murmuring. They were all around Joshua and Caleb. People who would have mind their future. But Joshua and Caleb made up their mind that they were entering. They would celebrate God. And even Moses himself could not make it because he, 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 he was sucked in by the negativity of the people. But when it came for uh, separation, God took Joshua and Caleb and carried them to the promised land. Hallelujah. You must know where you are going to. People who have future are focused. People who have a direction, they are focused. They don't just meddle with all kinds of nonsense. Hallelujah. So you must understand that the more you murmur, the more you go into these disputings with people, people will come and they want to get into un 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 unnecessarily argument, unnecessary anger. Don't get involved. Don't get involved. They're not going anywhere. Hallelujah. When you that are going somewhere, if you murmur before, repent and say, Lord, have mercy, because any little murmur prolongs your journey in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Verse 15, that ye may be blameless and harmless. That ye may be what? Blameless and harmless. The sons of God. You see, when people begin to strife you and push you on every side, the moment you begin to open your mouth, they start trying to blame you. Without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and powerless nation. Verse 16. Hold forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. That I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea, if I have been offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Amen. You, you must understand in this season, something is going to happen. The devil. The devil is moving in so much veracity and so much strength to resist the Christians, resist the believers. If you must grow, start speaking in tongues for a while. Reading the book of Psalms back to yourself. Reciting the book of Psalms, praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Get acquainted with the Holy Ghost. Get some books. Read some books. One of the books I always say is, I'm reading the book now, Watch My Name. It's a very powerful book on um, Songs of Songs, The Watchman Inc. I just started the book. I think I started another book again. Where is that book? I've read this book already, but I'm reading it again. The Fourth Dimension, Young Cho. Hallelujah. Very powerful book. Very powerful book. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, let's get ready again. Let's get acquitted for what the Lord is about to do in this journey, in this life. You are about to be blessed. Lift your two hands again and begin to talk to the Lord today. Amen. You must be a lamp. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let me be a lamp for you. Let me be a lamp. Jesus became a lamp that took away the sins of this world. Hallelujah. Lord, remove, put upon me the nature of the lamp, the nature of humility, the nature of meekness. Put it, put it upon me, O oh God. Let me wear it as an armor in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians Chapter six. Mm. I read from verse five. Let me read chapter five, Ephesians chapter five, verse one. He said, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering, sacrifice to God for his sweet smelling savour. You know, one of the things I've said about, I've said this is that one of the mysteries of the love of God is that you must demand it. You must ask God to fill you with love. You know, the scripture says walk in love. They don't tell you that you need to pray for it. Some people don't have the nature, the anointing to even walk in love. They don't have the grace. And if you don't have the nature to walk in love, you will be intolerant with people's shortcomings. You can't walk with them. You can't even... Paul says, I pray for to God that Christ be formed in your heart. 
Hallelujah. Christ be formed in your heart. It can be very hard. It can be very, very hard to work with people who are very impatient, people who are very critical, people who always undermine you, people who always speak negative about you, people who don't celebrate you. It can be very, very hard. Hallelujah. So what do I do? My secret is this. The Bible says, let him that, uh, that lack it wisdom, let him come, let him ask. Hallelujah. And God will give it to him lavishly. In the same way, in the same way, he that lacks love of God, because the love of God, to be filled with the love of God is to, listen, when you ask God, Lord, fill me with your love. I've tried it before. When the love of God comes so much in worship and I've prayed, Lord, fill me with your love. And I really focus on that. The love of God becomes, I carry so much rules of war of God's love. That when people begin to act very impatient, act very carnal, act very rebellious towards me, because of the love that I've carried in my heart, the level of love, I find it very hard to respond negatively. It's like I find myself very calm, very meek. I say it is well, don't worry. Even though they're trying to hurt me with the intention of trying to hurt me because of the love of God upon me that I've asked for, you know, that love of God becomes a shield. And I, in that, in, with that love, I see them with a different lens, with the lens of love. So I don't act judgmental towards them. You know, it's funny how the people say, the less you sleep, the more you react angrily because you are not at rest you're not at peace how can you give peace to another when you are not yet slept you just have a few hours so you react very quickly a woman who is pregnant a man she she can get too erratic too a lot of things a lot of conditions can affect people because they've not been in that place of peace the more love you have inside of you, the more love impartation you get from the spirit, the more you are at peace. When you are at peace and the love of God inside of you, you just rest. They can be shouting, screaming. You just say, God bless you. Forgive them for they know what they do. Because why? You've marinated yourself in God's love. People spend time in worship. I don't know what they receive in worship. But when I spend time in worship, in the atmosphere, in that presence is the fullness of joy. I never leave God's presence without offering a request before Him. In that place, I say, oh God, pour your love upon me. Or else, my, my old, listen to me, to me. Do you know that the more love of the, the more the anointing of God's love falls upon you, the more you are able to walk in humility? The less love you have, in fact, the less love you have, the more you're able to walk in impatience, the more you're able to be rude, the more you are, you're, 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 you don't care for another, the more you don't want to intercede for people, the more everything, everything, when the love of God is so inside of you is so much, you want to care for people, you want to be selfless, you want to be a giver, you want to be generous. I, 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 I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. This love nature is not something like, I want to love. I can switch it on, I can switch it off. No. You can run out of God's love. It's like a gas that empowers the car to go on a journey. The more love you have, is the more you're able to resist the attacks of the devil. Are you hearing me today? The danger about God's love is that if God's love is so much inside of you, you may have a difficulty when to release the judgment of God and when to be calm, just like John the Baptist. There were times that God wanted him to declare, like Elijah. And there were times that he just... But you have to follow the Spirit of God. Once the Spirit of love is upon you, you'll be led by the Spirit of God. People will try to crucify you. The Lord will make a way for you. I know what I'm saying. I have seen this. I've seen this. When I've not prayed about God's love, 
and I've not slept, my reaction can be different. It can be erotic. It can be... Whoosh. Hallelujah. So if we must walk with him, you must understand there are two laws that govern the earth. Hate and love. Every creation on the earth is created by love. Flowers respond by love. Every of us, no matter how egoistic we are, we want love. We want us to be loved and respected. Everybody. Everybody. So, one of the things is that they might pretend to you that they don't care. But if you decide to ask God, if you know your vulnerability and you ask God, feel me with this love of God. Feel me with the capacity of love. I'm not saying feel me with patience because there's a different school of patience. People say, oh, they want me, I want to be patient and then God puts you around people who are slow, slow, slow. No, this, that's, this is different. When God's love is upon you, it makes you very calm. It makes you to see when they are acting wayward. It makes you to see the spirit behind them. It doesn't make you to receive them based on how they are doing. Even if they are operating witchcraft, you're able to see the spirit influencing them against you. The love of God separates, it makes you to see the, who they really are as God sees them. That's how the love of God is. It's very beautiful. Very beautiful. Um, the love of God helps you to celebrate the gift that they carry. It helps you to identify it with, without insecurity. You see, when the love of God is there, it swallows insecurity, inferiority, low self-esteem. It makes you just celebrate them. Are you hearing me? The love of God is, when it, when it becomes very strong, ah, they will be telling you their problems, and you feel so compassionate. You say, man, let me pray for you. When the love of God is lacking, <laughs> oh, please, 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 please. Finish what you are saying. I was talking to a pastor, a man of God. A man of God said to me, uh, I said, I beg, I beg, these people, I don't tire. I'm, I'm tired of these people. They, they, they just call, 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 call. No, they, don't, they don't give no offering. I said, I beg, I beg, I beg. People who react like that is because they, there's, there's no love in their hearts. When there's much love, you walk in so much compassion. And it's something that you must ask God for it. It's not anointing. I don't know why they don't preach it. People just preach that walk in love, walk in love. You can't just walk in love. The Spirit has to give it to you. Because when this ingredient falls upon you, that's it. All the devil is trying to do is to harden your heart. You see how the devil was chasing David left and right? David who was supposed to be king. That's what has happened to many of you. The devil has put sores behind you. So they will start coming to create a sore, to create a wound. To bruise you emotionally. You can tell how many times David asked God, Lord, heal me. This, this guy is young. Lord, don't forget that. Saul is like a father. But Saul was a king. Wanting to kill David. Chasing David from one place to another. One, and, he, and he killed Goliath. David killed Goliath. How do you expect... You wake up here, somebody's telling that Saul is coming after you. You travel to Canada, Saul is there. What, Luke is searching for you. He's not there for himself, he's searching for you to kill you. You come to America, you are sleeping, you say, oh, the, uh, Saul is searching for you again. So what is going on? What did I do to this Saul? Did I sleep with his wife? Why is he in search of me? And there were many times that he was so close. Hallelujah. Everything was to make David to walk in unforgiveness, to walk in bitterness. I realized that this man was the greatest worshiper in his time. David was a man who carried the mysteries of God, who loved God. So, because he had a strong intimacy with God, the devil was looking for how to break his heart break his focus so many of you who are very prophetic many of you who are very anointed this is what the devil will try to do to you he will try to put people he will just hate you for no reason just wanting you to walk in that unforgiveness wanting you to come out from your love walk with God wanting you to step in the flesh
your anointing sometimes will provoke the wrong people to react. Hallelujah. So this is what this is one of the things that we face on our daily lives. Saul chased David so much. I'm sure David would have said, why is he chasing me? Not knowing that God was about to give David a, a, a throne. Not that the God was about to promote David. Joseph was being chased around by his brothers. Why are they trying to kill me? Not knowing that they were chasing the, uh, Joseph to his throne. Whoever is chasing you, they're chasing you to your to your throne. The time is coming. God is about to exalt you. Hmm. God is about to exalt you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, an innocent boy in the manger, said a new king is born. From that day, Herod was chasing him. That day, it's like everybody began to hate him. What did he do? Nothing. Innocent boy. Because of him, a lot of babies died. Same with Moses. Because of him, a lot of babies died. A whole king, not, not a, a, a small boy like him. Great people were not hating him. Wanted to kill that Moses. Were searching for him. Great people were searching too for this Jesus. Wanted to kill this young boy. For what? Any leader that is trying to kill you now, that hates you, is because you're about to take their position. Oh, you didn't hear me. <laughs> you didn't hear me. Any leader that is chasing you right now is because God is about to hand over their throne to you. For you are the rising and the falling of many. For you are the rising and the falling of many. Many will fall while God will raise you up. For as God was raising Samuel, he, there was... He, he, the kingdom of Eli was, was coming down, came down. Hallelujah. I tell you, it's a beautiful season we are in right now. It's a beautiful season. It's a beautiful season. Look at what it says in Ephesians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Live rumbon si brande de baby aparacados. Lele Mendele Baby Abaradori Baby O Shanda Bahaya. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Obey your parents in the Lord. Your, your spiritual parents, physical parents, honor your father and your mother, which is your first commandment, with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Hallelujah. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. Now, there's one thing I want to read here quickly. Let me, where is that scripture? Verse 8. Knowing that, it said, look at what it says in verse 6. It says, servants, in verse 5, servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in sugness of your heart to Christ. Look how it says in verse 6, not with, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as a servant of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of the Lord from the heart. With, with good, we are doing service as to the Lord, not to men. You must understand, when you read the scripture, you must understand this, that God is interested in our web webbing. All God is trying to say here in this scripture is that if we must serve, serve with sincerity. Serve with sincerity. Serve with honesty. Amen? Sincerity, honesty is a spirit and a virtue of truth. The spirit of truth will lead you into our truth. Anything that is like eye service and all those things, those are falsehood. These are pretense. 
every time I serve, people know me. They can read my heart right away. Um, it's very easy for a prophet to prophesy to me. Any prophet. It's very easy for an intercessor. And I, an intercessor to prophesy to me because they can see my heart. I live a life of transparency, realness, sincerity, honesty. Um, this should be your virtues. When you work with men, huh? if you have a shortcomings, you don't like this, you don't like that, be real. Communicate to your leader what you feel. Amen? And uh, you use wisdom in how you say it so that they don't get hurt. But make sure that you don't work in pretense. Hallelujah. And uh, when, when, is, when your time comes, because remember this, whatsoever a man doeth, that shall he reap. Whatsoever you sow, that shall he reap. And in your beginning of your service, when your time comes, is what you've done diligently. Joseph was made a leader based on how he served Potiphar and his wife, how he served his own father. Amen. Hallelujah. So in his all sincerity, you'll be real. And God will eventually reward you when your time is up. When your time comes, look at what it says in verse 8. Knowing that whatsoever good thing that any man does, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Hallelujah. Remember that. Remember that. Remember that. And so in verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In the power of his might. For you to be strong in the Lord, it means that the devil cannot rule over your life. The devil cannot press you on your bed. The devil cannot give you food to eat in the dream. The devil cannot sleep with you. Neither can the devil have sex with you. As long as what? As long as you be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yesterday I was talking to you. How do you strengthen yourself? How do you become strong in the Lord? We are engaging in a 21-day fast. On the 5th will be done. If you have not started, get involved. How do you get rooted in God? How do you get strong in God? Number one is fasting. The Bible says that Jesus went in the power of his mind. Returned back in, in the power of the Spirit after he returned back from 40 days and 40 nights. The Spirit of God led him to the wilderness. When he got back, he came in the power of his might, the power of the might of God. Number two, we see this in Ephesians chapter 5. He says something that is very, very powerful. He says what? Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding the will of the Lord. I read from verse 16. And uh, verse 18, he says, Now be not be drunk with wine, wherein the essence, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. How do you be filled with the Holy Spirit? Verse 19. Speaking to yourselves in Psalms, in hymns. Hallelujah. You must read the book of Psalms. People don't know that that's the place of power. Recite it in tongues. He that dwelleth in secret place of the most shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, The Lord is my refuge and my fortress. You're just reading and reading and reading, reading the book of Psalms to yourself. Hallelujah. Speaking to yourselves in Psalms, in hymns, spiritual songs. Eliaba, Laria Candoro, Ndorio. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him with songs. Hallelujah. Spiritual songs. You begin to pray in the spirit. You begin to grow. You grow. You grow yourself up in God. By making melody in your heart to the Lord. Then it says, verse 20 giving thanks always for all things to God and Father. Hallelujah. You are thanking the Lord for your journey. You're thanking the Lord for everything. You're thanking the Lord for how men treated you. You are thanking the Lord for giving you the grace to be faithful, to remain steadfast in Him. Hallelujah. This is growing yourself in Him. Hallelujah. When you've read a lot of Psalms, the book of Psalms, when there was one time I read the whole book of Psalms in tongues. I was, uh, you know, I was in class in school and I got in time to study and the Lord says, seek your first his kingdom. Uh, many times you want to remember your things, you want to remember what you study, you must always get the word of God inside of you. Maybe two or three chapters before you start studying your books. If you're in, into career, you want to, you're studying, you're in school and you really want to remember what that which you read, I give you advice. Before you start studying, read two or three chapters. Seek God. 
let the word of God enter. Because the word of God has light molecules. When it's released or projected to your mind, every force of darkness that blocks your mind from remembering, every if you are going through my if you are going through fear, spirit of fear, if you're going through worry, if you're going through a panic attack, anxiety, the word of God should be your best friend. The word of God should be your best friend. And when I mean the word of God, it's not the one that you go and read um, uh, the book of Proverbs. It's good. You can do all those things. But the book of Psalms, recite it to yourself. You will see the boldness of God manifest. One of the ones I always say to pastors is that before you preach, always read Psalm 119. It's the longest book in the Bible. When you read the book of Psalm 119, before you go preach and you meditate on it, you recite it to yourself. It's like spiritual vitamins. Hey, God, Jesus. It's like spiritual vitamins. I know what I'm saying. Hallelujah. So you recite it back to yourself. You begin to recite the book of Psalms. Just go, not for knowledge, just knowledge time will come. That's when you're studying. But I'm talking about reciting the book of Psalms. Just recite, 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 recite in tongues. Read, read. If you don't have no prayer points, just read the book of Psalms, read the book of Psalms. Hallelujah. Now, what are you doing? You're making yourself, you are being strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. The Bible says, look at what it says in verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. How do you put on the wiles? How do you put on the armor of God? People say, how do you put on the armor of God? Look at it. Say, Put on, that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. It's giving a description of the forces of darkness. Let's go further to 13. It says, Wherefore, take to you the whole armor that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all, stand. Hallelujah. Stand therefore, having your loins about the guard of truth, breastplate of righteousness. What is the best armor that I told you when I was ministering early? If you're just joining us, I told you that the best armor, number one armor, that is biblical, is your armor of love. Amen. If the love of God is being released in your life, the Bible says, when well, if there's no love, you might prophesy, you might speak in tongues, you might walk in the giftings. If there's no love, it's a what? It's what is empty. The word empty means you are naked. The word it means there is no value in heaven, meaning the currency in heaven is what love. And so I told you that without the love of God, you cannot manifest the godly nature. That was the truth. Without the love of God, there is no way you can manifest the godly nature. Tell me, tell me. Because the Pharisees, the only difference with them is that they didn't have the love of God. When you don't have the love of God, you are very quick to judge, you are very quick to criticize, you are very quick to look at people's shortcomings, you are very quick to write people off, you are very quick not to intercede for them, you are very quick to speak against them. You are very quick to be very intolerant. You are very quick to hate them. You're just very quick to be disgusted, irritated about them. It's just a lot of things. Once the love of God is not there, it's hard for me to see any man of God without God's love manifest the nature of Christ. It's just impossible. But when you ask God, Lord, fill me. I can't walk in love. Fill me with this love nature. Fill me with the character of love. Fill me with the anointing to love. Fill me with the power of your love. Fill me, oh God, put upon me the spirit of love. When your spirit comes upon you, people will say nonsense to you. You may not react. You will only react based on the, 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 the amount of love that is inside of you. If you have so much of God's love, you'll be in a place that you'll just be looking at them laughing. If you have a little bit of God's love, you'll react, but you will hold yourself. But when the love of God is to his fullness, you will you'll be wondering, what is making them upset? You'll be laughing too. 
But you see, when you are still provoked, you make sure that after you've been provoked, you go in there. It can be painful. Still asking God, Lord, fill me with your love. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your love. Because if you run out of God's love, <laughs> that is when you will say, you know what? Okay, enough is enough. You've been doing it for days. Now let me show you who I am. <laughs> and that is when you lose your temper. Amen. Hallelujah. And then you could feel the energy. <laughs> you could feel the everything vibration coming, showing for. Hallelujah. But when you hide yourself in this love, and you ask God, Lord, marinate my heart with love. Fill me with your love. The love becomes an insulator to rise above the shortcomings of others. Hallelujah. Jesus, the love of God makes you selfless. In Jesus' name. So you need love. That's just it. Hallelujah. Yeah, the love of God will help you not to even revenge. Yeah, there are people that are very revengeful. I, I, I know them. Some of them I know them personally. And uh, hallelujah. And it's not a good thing. It, it, the only thing, the reason why people revenge quickly is because there are two laws that govern the earth love and hate. Amen. Love and hate. And so when this love is filled in your heart, you don't want to really want to revenge because you know it's of the Lord. The love of God makes you selfless, makes you to walk in compassion towards others. People can be doing some things you could feel their pain you can connect to them because the love of god is so much in your heart people don't pray about love anymore they, they just say walk in love um love love and, and you can't you, you can't you can't operate in it like that you can't walk in it you can, you can talk about it but you can't just walk in it you may even pastors cannot walk in it you you have to pray to god to fill you with the love remember this lean not to your understanding all that ways acknowledge him Proverbs 3, and it will direct the path. You must be the one to acquire it. You say, he that lacketh wisdom, let him ask. He that lacketh love, let him ask. That's what I'm saying. When people take advantage of you, when you, when you ask the love of God to fill you up, are you hearing me? When you ask the love of God to fill you up, when the love of God is so much, so much, people want to take advantage of you. You want to take advantage but then the wisdom of God shows up. When the wisdom of God shows up, there's a way you talk to them and they will stop. Many people are so hurt emotionally, physically, that they don't want to really reveal their inner heart because they, for the fear of they will be criticized, for the fear they will be looked down upon, for the fear they will be despised, they will fear they will be rejected, so they just stay in their shell. But remember, the Bible says that confess your faults to one another. So what you do when you when the love of God is so much inside of your heart, the Scripture we read um, we read a while back, esteeming others higher than you, esteeming others higher than you. Seeing this, I, when I read that Scripture. Um, I, 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 that was Philippians chapter 2. Everyone, you must understand that to esteem others, you must understand that it's not just like looking at them and esteeming them, making yourself feel insecure before them. No. What God is trying to say is that every man has something you don't have. Every man knows something you don't have. You might know some things. Most people know some things. But the areas they know, the Bible says we hear in parts, we see in parts. So the greatest wisdom is to identify the strength in people that you don't have. Don't be insecure with what they have and be jealous of them that you don't have. Tap into what they have. That's why God made us, made us entire independent. And so when you see a great leader, a king, the reason why he's very good is that he's able to take advantage of everyone's strength. He sees down presidents all over the world, great kings. He sees down like King Pharaoh. He sees down and he asks questions. King Pharaoh over Joseph, King Nebuchadnezzar, he will have a dream. He will say, you know what? I have a problem here, a situation. Who can solve it? He can solve it. So he asks all the gifted people around him. And then Joseph comes with a dream, interpretation. Daniel comes with an interpretation to, to, to reveal that which is done in a dream. Hallelujah. That's wisdom. 
That's wisdom. That is powerful administration right there. I've noticed this in my life. Many times I go through situations and problems. I don't come in the area of I'm an island. I know it all. No. I tap. The Bible says wisdom is like deep waters. But the man of understanding draws it out. Wisdom is like deep waters. A man of understanding. What does he mean? It's a man of understanding. Meaning, a man can stand before me. A king can stand before me. A leader can stand before me. He may not be a leader. A young boy stand before me. And I'm going through situations in my life. I'm going through some challenges. I look at them. I don't have to feel arrogant. I say, let me call it a, a pop before I get an answer. No. I look at them. Now, remember this. I'm identifying with the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God knows all things. He doesn't know. This guy doesn't know. It might be the flesh. So I start asking him some questions. He starts responding to me based on my hunger of the Spirit. Now, I'm pulling. I'm reaching out to the depth of wisdom inside of him. I'm pulling it out. Jesus made himself of no reputation. So now, I'm, for you to receive from that individual, you have to make yourself of no reputation. If you say that, man, I'm an apostle, so I can't listen to small boys. I'm, I'm an ego, so I can't listen to this chicken. You will lose. You are making yourself of a high reputation, so you can't even receive. But for you to receive something precious from that individual, not from the flesh, but from the spirit, you don't have to tell him, Lisa, I come to receive from you. No, 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 no. Just esteem the strength that is out of him. Esteeming others higher than yours. So you just humble yourself. How are you? That's what Jesus did. The Bible says he went and was asking questions to, to, to doctors, asking questions in the temple. So you, you look at him and you begin to ask. You ask questions. How are you? And this and that. Sometimes, even prophesy. What's the Lord saying? But when you do this, they will begin to flow and flow, and you realize, oh my goodness, I needed this. Oh my goodness, I needed this. Oh my goodness, I needed this. Now they're ministering to you. Now you can let this ministry continue. Of course, sometimes people can be doing this, and all of a sudden, you know, they can get really, really, really. They can get to the place whereby it's taken for granted or it can be abused. Hallelujah. They can try to abuse you and you don't want to over, 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 overwhelm you. They don't know when to stop. But you are the one to know when to stop. You are the one that activated it in them. You have the ability to, to, to say, okay, enough. Why? You are pulling, you are connected with your spirit. And they are of the flesh. Once you have God as the, the God in them have met your answers. Remember this, every man has an answer in, locked up inside of them. And you have questions inside of you. So for you to get your answers met, you ask questions to that individual. And that until you ask questions, answers will not be granted to you. And when answers are given to you, access has to be given. And once when the access has been granted to you, you know, and you cannot walk away. I don't know if I'm, I'm saying something deep here. Amen. But we individuals, we must understand this level spiritually. Hallelujah. God be the glory. Hallelujah. So understand that that is how you emulate others better than you. That is how you esteem others. Hallelujah. That's how you esteem others. Just ask questions. It doesn't make you a fool. It doesn't make you foolish. Hallelujah. Amen. It doesn't make you low. No, no, no. Stay where you are. Celebrate who you are. Be comfortable. Amen. I told you this before. The greatest antidote to fear. Insecurity. Inferiority. Low self-esteem. Inferiority. Low self-esteem. Inferiority, low self-esteem, insecurity, fear, rejection. The greatest healing antidote is the love of God. The more you cry for God's, more of God's love, it penetrates your heart. It penetrates those wounds, those pain, 
those hearts, swallows it up, and you, it causes you to be at rest. The love of God. The love of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I think we're coming to the close of it now. What time is it now? Yes, we gotta go. It's, it's almost Sunday. Yes, we gotta go. Hallelujah. I can't be talking 7.30 like the church. Hallelujah. Well, I want to thank God for those who joined us today. Amen. Our fast is still ongoing. Please, if you can't do your fast, make sure you do join us for at least three days. Hmm? Drink some tea. Drink some, drink some tea so that you'll be strong. Hallelujah. God is faithful. God is faithful. It's going to be serious in New York. It's going to be very serious in New York. It's going to be very serious. Many will be delivered. Many will be liberated. On Saturday, we're going to be doing foot washing. Washing their feet, dipping your feet in oil. Oh my goodness. You want to be there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's deep intercession the Lord wants me to do for New York. Based on those, a lot of people are going through some struggles, some serious struggles. Amen. Particularly, particularly the those who in the Caribbean world, in the Caribbean island, Caribbean nations. Oh boy, God has a destiny for you. God will literally reach out to the depth of your being and set you free. I've heard so many cases that, oh my goodness, I can't believe these people are so oppressed. I've heard some deep, deep situations. Thank God I heard it before I went to go pray for them, before I went to New York. My God, people are under serious oppression. I mean, my goodness. Some of you are going through problems. If you hear their problems, you will just say thank God for yours. If you hear their situation, their own problems, you will say thank God for yours. Deep. Hmm. Deep. Hmm. Hmm. I tell you. I tell you. But God, God, God is the only one that liberates and sets people free, and He will do it. He will do it. All of us are wanting deliverance ourselves, but the Lord will continue to bring us to a place of perfect deliverance. Let me agree with you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord guide you. The Lord cause His face to shine upon you. As you go to church today, I decree that you will experience His glory. You will experience His power. You will experience His presence. I decree and I prophesy that the Lord will touch you with his fire. I decree that the hand of the Lord will be released upon you. That even in this service, that your worship will sanctify you. Worship will melt your heart. That the, the atmosphere of heaven will break over you. The oil of the Spirit of God, the oil of joy will be released upon your life. That the heaviness, the pain will be lifted. I decree the blood of Jesus over you. I decree, I decree unusual favor among your peers in the name of Jesus may your feet be led by the spirit in the company of the righteous may you experience and obtain divine favor in the name of Jesus Christ I pray the blood of Jesus over you and your family and your family I decree that no weapon formed against you shall prosper let the counsel of the wicked be broken in Jesus name we pray Amen 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 you are loved you are blessed God bless you. Keep me also in your prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you been blessed? Amen. Those on uh, the prayer line, have you been blessed? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, Sister Charity, I'm proud of you. Very proud of you. <laughs> Very proud of you. Uh, I was monitoring you when you're gonna leave. I was just checking you out. I said, "This, this, this woman." <laughs> it is well. Uh, love you guys. Amen. Let's share the grace before we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life, I will dwell in the house of God forever and ever. Amen. Say it one more time. Surely, 
goodness and mercy shall follow me say it one more time say one more time goodness and mercy shall follow me shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen amen hallelujah god bless you guys love you be blessed amen see you at the top all right god bless you god bless you hallelujah yeah what if uh -huh. My son is leaving today. He's going to Germany. Oh, really? Congrats. God bless yeah. you. Give him, yeah. give him all the hug yeah. you can. Pardon me? I said, give him all the hug you can. I know, most definitely. Thank you. God bless everyone. Have a great day. Oh, you too now. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.